Welcome to episode four of the Trauma Corner podcast. Today's guest is Taylor Ryan Nardoni. And I am so excited for you to listen to this. We talk spirituality, how to heal from our traumas using spirituality with my story and his story and how to follow the universe and trust the universe to achieve and manifest your dreams. Thank you so much for being here. It is, like I said, your name just popped up and I got like a rush of nerves because I talk on my page about childhood trauma and I don't get to talk about spirituality. And people ask me, how do I heal from this trauma? But what got me out of that dark place I was in was manifestation and spirituality. So thank you so much for being here, Taylor. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing fantastic. It's an honor to be here with you. I was so happy when you reached out. And I just think the power of social media is amazing because we can all connect from across the globe and kind of help elevate this new earth. So it's an honor. It is. Thank you. It's an honor to have you here. And I think because we don't essentially know each other, we just know each other from videos, I think it's a great point here to share my story and any advice I have and your story, any advice you have, not only with each other, but with the world. So when I first came across your videos, um, the first video that came up, I think it was your story, and it popped up in the middle that caught my attention was, life is too short to live it in fear. And I think I followed you from there, because that's what hit me. Because... To tie it all in, I know a lot of people really close to me who died before they should have. Well, I, I think everyone's got their time, but they died very young. And in 2020, I went through a dark place where I lost people. And to get out to that place, I found spirituality. Unintentionally, or intentionally. <laughs> um, so I dove into spirituality. So I, I'll just briefly talk about my story. Because again, I haven't. And on my page, I haven't talked about it. I just talked about the trauma and how to heal. And to heal and to get out of that trauma and the dark place I was in, spirituality is what got me there and manifesting. So my story briefly, I started in 2020. I was working three jobs. I had no money. And then <laughs> on Friday the 13th of March in 2020, I found my grandfather dead. And it just hit me hard. Obviously, he was like my father. And then I had really bad flashbacks. And then five months later, I thought, okay, the flashbacks are going. And then my father died. And he was 44, um, had a heart attack and died. We wasn't speaking. My wife was pregnant. I didn't tell him. So he was in a, I was in a dark place. So I thought, right, for my daughter's sake, and for mine and my wife's, I have to get out of this place I'm in. So I picked up three books. One was called Just Fucking Do It by Nora Hibbert. One was Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. And one was The Law of Attraction, The Teachings of Abraham by Esther and Jerry Hicks. I picked up Just Fucking Do It. I was like, right, let's change my mindset. Let's get out of this place. Think and Grow Rich. I picked it up to learn about money. I was like, let's improve my finances because that'll fucking help. And then I picked up The Law of Attraction, The Teachings of Abraham because I sort of, I was familiar with the term and I just wanted to dive deeper. But the three books were about the law of attraction and manifesting, whether it was um, subtly or not. So I thought, right, this is a bit of a sign. So I started learning more, started practicing all these techniques. And first of all, I was like, this is a fucking cult. What do you mean write down how, what you desire and it comes true? I was like, that's not going to fucking work. Then I started. <laughs> first thing I was like, and again, I'm going to keep this brief. Firstly, I was like, I have £1,000. I have £1,000 and I truly fucking felt like I had it and I had £200 in the bank at the time and this was during COVID and three days later I had an email off the government saying because I was self-employed and COVID had hit I was entitled to a grant of £1,000. I was like hmm that's a coincidence and then loads of little things like that loads of little manifestations started happening but they were coincidences um, in my mind until it wasn't until on my affirmations list of, I'm Ben Cole Edwards, I'm successful, I do this, I wrote, Jess is pregnant, and then we conceived in that week. And then I wrote on there, I was, I was like personal training, so I was like, I take on five clients a day, personal training business took off. And it was just like fucking magic. And I think when you start getting into the power of manifesting, um, because it feels so good and you can see it working, it works very fucking fast. So I wrote, I wrote at the bottom, I make 60,000 pounds this year. This was like November, so I thought, in my head, I thought it's not going to work because I don't think it's going to work because it's quite far-fetched. But I was in this, money was actually flowing into my life, right? And I, I wrote that down. Five weeks later, I made quarter of a million in the stock market. And then over the next few months, I made over a million. Um, and it, I had no idea what I was doing, and it just flew in. And then, because I left it in the stock market, once the money started coming down, I could only focus on the, the loss of money. 
And I thought, I'm not going to be able to give my kids the life that I promised them. And because where you, what you think about, you bring about, because I could only focus on losing money, I lost it all. Every fucking penny. And this took me to like last year. And I couldn't get back into manifesting. I couldn't, I felt like I was fooling myself right to my affirmations. Even though I knew that they worked for me, I couldn't get back to that place mentally because I felt like a failure as a father to lose all this money. So then um, I started a business and I was like, this has to work. And fast forward to now that I've, yesterday I closed the Facebook page down in this business because I have no time for it. Um, I launched that business and I was like, right, I have to get back into this space. So I'd come up into this room and I would meditate for 30 minutes. Um, I would write my affirmations down and read them out to myself for five minutes. And then I'd visualize for five minutes every day. But because we were in such a shit place financially, I would do this, feel good, not great, I feel good, go downstairs and then my wife would mention our current situation. And I'm like, fuck. So it'd bring me back down. So what I would say to my wife is, in the politest way possible, just be passive mentally for me for just a short amount of time and just let me focus on my affirmations and my visualization so I can bring that back into our lives. And I said, it'll work. I, I will attract it into my, our lives, but I can't have your negativity affect it. And I started writing down random things, but like about success. And then I started writing, people can't stop giving me money. And I just kept writing and kept writing it. And then at the time we had recently got married and people were just like giving us wedding money or wedding gifts. And I was like, oh wow, it's coming true. And then with the universe, um, and this is something else that really resonated when I watched your videos of me, um, you have to forget about the how because that's so not important. So I wrote that down and my wife was like, I, my wife was so focused on how we're going to make this money. And I was like, we will. I Forget about the how. People can't stop giving me money. And then I forgot that I'd even written it. That was in like January. Out of nowhere, from like March until now, I've had five to eight clients a day. And I only started TikTok in Jan end of January. Um, and then I was doing my, doing a client, writing notes, and I turned the page and randomly was list, list my affirmations. And at the top was people can't stop giving me money. And I was like, oh fuck, I am inundated with clients here. People cannot stop giving me money. And I had forgotten that I was gonna write it. So here I am, feeling a lot better than I've ever fucking felt in my life. And I feel bad about saying it, I feel great. And if I could if I could go back seven months and say to myself, it's going to work and here's the proof. You've bought a lot of fucking Lego recently. I'm like, oh fuck, that, you must be in a good fucking place. So that's how, where, I, where I started learning about manifestation to where I am now. When I started reading those three books, I didn't fucking stop. Um, I did say I was going to keep that brief, but I didn't. When did you... That was awesome. That was awesome. Thank you. And I, I know I know we'll relate to you because you also... So when I started Manifest and I ended up quitting three jobs that I was working. Um, and you also quit your job. So if you if you don't mind, would you enlighten us with your story and where you were to where you are and where you found what we just talked about? Well, you know, first of all, so I've always been... That story is beautiful, by the way. Your story, I think that's so cool. And to also discuss kind of the ebbs and flows of it, because you're right. As the money starts to go, that's the challenge there. Can you still yeah. maintain the mindset of understanding that all things are coming to you? And regardless of the circumstances, all is still well. So um, my spiritual journey began for me about a year ago. So, well, actually, no, I would say it, it, probably the end of 2020. I think 2020 actually messed up a lot of us <laughs> in yes. bad ways. And then, and then some in turn good ways. Um, you know, I was sitting on the couch one day. I was kind of avoiding what they call the Sunday scaries. You know, I had to go back to work the next day. I was a teacher at the time, taught for five years. And I remember just, just looking on Netflix and I saw something by Tony Robbins and the name kind of struck me. I'd never, I thought I'd never heard of him, but someone had mentioned him to me about a year prior. They were like, you would love him. So I went on, I listened to Tony um, and I watched this entire documentary about him and it kind of began the journey for me. So then I started slowly reading some, some spiritual books. I then read The Untethered Soul. I, you know... I read a little Jensen Cheer, so just kind of light spiritual works. Um, and it was really in the spring of 2022 that I had this major spiritual awakening where I felt this deep calling to quit my job. It wasn't that it was that I was, you know, necessarily like, oh my God, I have to leave this. It was like, I have to jump in 
to whatever this is coming up. I don't know what it is. So I sat on it for about two months. I meditated every day. I, you know, worked with coaches during that time. I really was trying to figure out, you know, what am I doing? Like, what, where is this coming from? At the time, actually, so I was teaching music for five years and I was getting my license to go teach general education. So I thought I was going to be leaving my current job to go off to a new one. But instead, upon getting the certification to do this, my higher self was like, eh, not quite. Um, and so in July, I resigned from my teaching job and I totally took a leap into the unknown. I just kept feeling it was this call to jump. And I remember I looked up at the universe one day and I was like, I'll do this, but you've got to give me a sign. And so I just got sign after sign after sign because, you know, I'm very very intuitive. I always have been. My intuition is very much at the front of the line. So I've learned that that's just my internal guidance system. And it's just time for me to listen. So that was leap number one. And then I spent about a year just working as a server at a restaurant. Loved it. It was so fucking easy. I could just make good money and then I could just live my life. And then I would be having these conversations, you know, very spiritual conversations while I was filling the syrup or delivering the pancakes with, you know, coincidentally, just these very spiritual people that had been hired. Huh? What a coincidence. And so I just enjoyed my life and I had money come into me at the time that, um, you know, with a, with a brand partnership that really ended up funding a lot of my future work that I've been doing with coaches and kind of setting up my own business now. And it was come 2023 where I kind of started to feel that intuitive ping of like, okay, I think I'm heading to become a speaker. I think this is part of it. This is going to be a big part of my life. And so at the end of April, I felt the call again. I was feeling a lot of resistance towards where I was working at the restaurant and I just knew it had served its purpose. And so I put my arms up in the air. I actually was supposed to go to a new restaurant and just work fewer days. Um, and I was going to start this business. And then I said, I was like, that's not that's not going to work. That's not what my soul is telling me to do. So I kind of just laughed. I put up my hands and I was like, well, this is the ultimate form of trust. So let's see what happens. And so I quit my restaurant job. I launched my spiritual life coaching business. I opened one-on-one -on -one calls and I worked with 50 people in a month and a half. And so it was just like, whoosh. and looking back in hindsight, I'm like, you know, it really is just the unwavering trust. That's what it comes down to. It's just this silent knowing that you have that just can't be broken. No one could have told me anything. No one could have said, oh my God, this, you know, any fear you could have, I would have been like, okay. And I just kept walking. And looking back, I'm like, wow, that really does not match logic, like to jump and then rely just off of doing one-on-one -on -one calls. Now I have a whole, you know, a whole setup with things, but you know, that's, that's kind of my story of where I am now. And now I'm moving towards, you know, building a course. I have my first one launching next week, four weeks to freedom. So it's, it's been a beautiful journey. I mean, I think my intuition spiritually has always been to the front since I was around 13 or 14. So I know when it's calling and it doesn't, it doesn't strike me that often. It's not like, it's like every day, you know, I'm talking these big life changing things. I know what it feels like. It comes from that beautiful heart space and it's just like, okay. That's what I have to do. So it's been a ride. It has been a ride and a half, but it's 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 been incredible, I think. And, and the other great thing about this past year was, you know, the universe just brought me like book after book after book. So you said Abraham Hicks. I love Abraham. I sometimes feel I channel Abraham. Um, I, you know, was reading a lot of Eckhart Tolle. I did read some Tony Robbins. I was reading Michael Singer, Jen Sentiro again, you know, um, so many other books. I have like a stack of 20 and I was like a sponge. So, you know, I also tell people, I'm like, whenever you make a big leap in life, you know, if you're open to it, like truly, truly open, the teachers, the resources, everything will unfold for you. It's probably just not going to unfold the way you think it's supposed to, but that's the whole point, you know? Yeah. So it's, um, thank you. That's nuts. And congratulations for where you are. It just goes to show it's okay. It just goes to show my story and yours life can change very fucking fast if you allow it. And it's all about taking that leap and putting the trust in. It's funny, a few little things, like when I was setting up for this call, I had Alexa on and I said to the universe, just, just quietly and just quickly, I said, just give me a song that's a sign just for this session. And my father's funeral song played, which I thought was a bit strange, which is um, Kenny Rogers' Gambler. And then your, my iPad here is resting on Tony Robbins' book. And he was like, well, the first book I read was Tony Robbins, Awaken the Giant Within. Um, and then and then you said about, um, you, you said to the universe, I'm happy to take this jump, but please give me a sign. So before I, before any of this trauma, this must have been six years ago, I was a delivery driver, for, uh, delivering parcels. And I believe the universe will talk to you in ways that you know, the easiest ways to communicate. So for me, it's music. And if I, I can be in the car and turn the radio off and I will ask the universe a question and I will turn the radio back on and it will give it to me in a song, nine times out of 10. And this one day I was delivering 
and there, it was it was literally as though my friends were playing a prank on me because everything I was feeling it was like a complex emotional situation that was going through my family every single song had a message for me it was insane I was like looking over cameras um every single like and even I would get I had this one client um one uh parcel deliver deliver and his surname was like heaven and got the parcel went to the door and knocked nothing knocked again nothing come back in the car read you on and it was knock knock knocking on heaven's door by um guns and roses i think um and so many things and i was like someone has to be talking to me and i came up to this big roundabout and i said i looked up and i said look if someone or something is doing this and trying to communicate with me please give me a sign and i stopped at this roundabout and there was this big billboard that said are you reading the signs and it was like, it wasn't an advert for a company. It was just white background. Are you reading the signs? I was like, what the fuck does this mean? So I'd asked, I'd asked for a sign and it gave me a literal sign and said, are you even reading them? So yeah. I sort of let that go. And then until I sort of dove into this whole manifestation and practicing it for myself, that memory sort of came back up and I was like, oh shit, I could have done this a long time ago. Um, for me, when I realized all of this wasn't a coincidence, was back in 2020 and I was working in a supermarket. I was an online personal trainer and I was um, a massage therapist. And I went to do a massage for this couple. And for the last two weeks, the previous two weeks, I would get up in the morning, sit at my dining table with a cup of tea and listen to What a Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong. And there was this house for sale, which was like half an hour away from me, which was 950,000 pound. And I had like a thousand pound in the bank. Spoiler, I didn't get the house. But the house was for sale and I would look through the photos and there was one photo of the balcony overlooking the sea. So every morning for two weeks, I had a cup of tea, listened to that song and closed my eyes, imagining that I was on that balcony with a cup of tea, listening to the same song. At, after, well, it got to a two week mark and then I went to went to this couple's house and done a massage and they were like, great, thank you. Um, can I book you in for every two weeks? I was like, yeah, awesome. It was like my first regular client. And she said, in December, we're moving. If we pay you extra, can you come to a new house? I was like, yeah, of course. Where? And she told me. And I said, oh, I've been looking at houses down there, dreaming. I said, one online is £950,000. She said, yeah, that's it. And I was like, I, I tried to explain that I've been manifesting this exact house and that I was going to be in it. And they didn't grasp it. But what I had done wrong with my manifesting was imagining me being in the house, not having the keys and not owning that house. So at that point, there was like a kick up the ass from the universe saying, this isn't all a coincidence, you are creating this. And it would get to the point where I would be really in the zone of my manifestations and I'd be out the garden and I would like, and it for people who aren't in this space and aren't, I've never experienced this, I could be, it sounds like nuts, and I could be in the garden and I'd close my eyes and imagine a car sound. I know it sounds, <laughs> sounds nuts. I'd imagine a car sound and out of all the cars passing, there'd be a loud exhaust or I'd imagine a car and and I think a lot of the times manifesting is like so we do this or everyone manifests obviously subconsciously but when something that will click with people is you're driving down the road and you'll see a car that you think is your friend or someone you know and when they get closer you realize it's not but because your attention's on that person later on that day you'll probably see that person or see someone related to them because you've put them there um, at what point in your journey, if there was one, um, did you realize this isn't a coincidence and I'm connecting with something higher here? Yeah. So last year it was really when I started seeing the angel numbers. So I would start to see the repeating numbers. I would see three, 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 one, one, one. And you know, it was funny. It was, it was to the point I'd never heard of it before. I think this was like May or June. And I was like, this has got to mean something. So I was looking it up and it was like, that's an angel number. And I went, oh my gosh. And I see them all the time constantly. I mean, every single, it's about to be two, two, two right here. Um, it, it always <laughs> happens. Yeah. It always happens. Um, and I think that was a moment for me where I was like, okay, this is very divine, you know, and it's a beautiful moment when you understand, like, first of all, you just realize you're never alone in the most beautiful way from a spiritual perspective. And you just realize that you are constantly in, in so, like in communication with what I perceive to be as well, your higher self. So like that part of your soul, that's like, we understand the bigger picture, let us guide you. And I think it's so beautiful. So every time I would get those signs, I mean, when I asked for a sign of whether or not I should quit my job, the things that I saw were unbelievable. I mean, even it was like the next day, my favorite YouTuber who I watched specifically because she was a news reporter for years, like three years, 
the next day I quit my job to go travel the world. I'm like, what? I was like, what, <laughs> what, you know? Um, I mean, it was insane. And then I, I mentioned this in, um, in one of my videos, but you know, there was a book that I had found again, I was scrolling TikTok one day and it was this girl who was talking and I felt very compelled to click on her profile. The video that I saw of hers was not um, viral. I think it had a couple of, like, there was nothing that was grabbing me in the video per se, but I just was like, let me go to her profile. And the first video pin was like a book called, you're not going crazy. You're just waking up. And I was like, okay. And so I was like, I feel like I should download this book. The first page I read in the book, I must've like flipped through. It was an ebook, but I like flipped through whatever. The first part that grabbed my attention was literally, it said, there's a, what did it say? There was like, there's a gap that must be crossed between stages three and four of your awakening process, two, two, two right now of your awakening process. And he goes, if you don't take this leap to bridge that gap, you're, you're just delaying the inevitable change that you know you need. So in other words, you're just going to go back to the beginning. And so this was in July and four days later, I was like, okay, that's my final sign. We're good. I got it. And I left my job. So it's like things like that. The synchronicities are unbelievable. It's, it's unbelievable. And I think from the outside, you know, what really it is, is you're just, you know, we ride the wave. You're just riding the wave. You're riding the wave of you've, you've trust fallen into the universe. You're no longer turning upstream. You're not planting your feet in the sand and going, I'm going to stand here. It's, you know, you're riding the wave. And so it looks like magic. You know, people, yeah. they'll look and they'll go, how, how is everything happening? Oh my God, I'm working so hard. How is this happening? I learned to trust. I learned to trust. I let go. I learned to let go. I learned to have fun. I prioritize joy. And it's just, that's the snowball you want to get going, you yeah. know, because you can hustle towards anything, but why would you do that? If you knew that you could just be and exist and have fun with it and have fun visualizing and thinking about what's to come and just know that it's on its way and then have gratitude for where you are. It's like the most beautiful combination for a very happy life, you know? Yes. Completely agree. And I think what you said there about um, it feels like magic. At the start, when you get into it and your manifestations start coming true, it truly does. You're like, what the fuck is going on here? Um, it does feel like magic. And then I think, not necessarily when you get good, but when it becomes part of your daily routine, this mad it doesn't feel like magic. The magic feels like normality because it's happening so yes. often. And then, like you said, prioritizing joy. That's what, that's what all these books, that's what all religion and love they all prioritize that um prioritize and joy because once you're in that joyful state then the magic happens and then to top it all off the cherry on the cake is the gratitude when you're grateful for where you are more of things you're grateful for will flow into your life um for the people who are watching this and again the majority of my followers here are going to be people who have gone through bad childhoods uh, or people who are struggling with parents or trauma in general and maybe relatively new to this. For me, there's a, a couple of couple of bits of advice I would give. Um, when I made a million pound, which I ended up losing, um, there was this, so basically I changed the background on my phone to a quote that said, I'm a millionaire. So every time I'd unlock my phone, I'd read, I'm a millionaire. And then after five, six days, every time I unlock my phone, I wouldn't even know I'm reading it. I would just subconsciously read it. Um, and then I kept that as my background for about a month. And then I, I had this like online friend. And after about a month, he was like, oh, this is new investing opportunity coming up. I spoke about this previously on a, on a different podcast I was on. He was like, this is investing opportunities coming up and it should do X percentage in the first week. And I was like, wow, I want to be a millionaire. So I'll put 10,000 pound in, put 10,000 pound in and shit you not within 45 seconds, it went over a million. And then I was like, I was like, okay. Like my wife was like bright red in the face. And I was like, sorry, I was like, calm down, give it 15 minutes and then I'll take 6 million out or something like that. Um, so I would lock my phone, sort of compose myself, unlock my phone again. And it was just bum, 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 bum. This guy who told me about this investing opportunity knew that I was new and I had no idea what I was doing and scammed everyone. So I put the money in and then it went up and then came back down. But on a spiritual level, I asked the universe for one million pound and he gave it to me and I didn't take it. I said, I'm going to get more. And I just let it sit there and didn't take it out and it, it went down. So that's something that happened, something small that you can do, just change your background. But I also done it recently when I, just before I started TikTok and started getting back into my affirmations was I've got a personal plate on my car and well, it's on retention somewhere now in the kitchen, I think. Um, and what I've done is found like one of my dream cars, put it as a background on my Apple Watch, and I photoshopped my number plate onto it, 
my registration plate. So every time I'd look at it, I would it would look like my car because my initials were on the car. And then since that sort of time and getting into my affirmations again, all of this has started flowing back to where I am now. Um, for people who are watching and thinking, I would love to heal. And if this is the way, then so be it. Or people are starting to open up to it or people are overwhelmed by it just getting involved. What advice would you give? Well, I would also, you know, to put it into perspective, <clears throat> It can be very healing in itself to understand that your soul came here to experience. Yes. And so I believe very, very firmly that it knew what it came here to experience. Because sometimes in order to understand the full capacity of the light, of that love, you have to lose it. You have to see the absence of it. So I view this all as one big ascension back to the light and we're all experiencing it in different ways. So it's just a return back home. So I think that can be very healing in itself because nothing is permanent. And also I view it all like waves on the beach. So as you know, there's going to be times in your life where things are unfavorable, but as Abraham Hicks will tell you, you've been provided the contrast to understand what is favorable to you. Whenever something happens that you don't like that, you know, I call it unfavorable, you know, just circumstances that, that, you know, you may find aren't great for you. It is a perfect opportunity, you know, maybe outside the lens of trauma, but just a perfect opportunity, even just something small to say, wait a sec, but this is telling me what I do want. It's not our job to stick to it like a dartboard. You know, it's our job to slingshot off of it and springboard off it, whatever you want to call it. And we get to go in the other direction. But, you know, anytime that we're going through those very, very intense waves, right? You know, sometimes our soul is saying, we understand. I think it's like, you know, there is such beauty coming, but we need you to experience this first. We're going to yeah. illuminate a lot of your shadow. We're going to illuminate things that you've been pushing down. We're going to illuminate all different parts of it. We want you to learn to love every single part of yourself. And as you integrate and accept that version of you, as you take that childhood you with you and not abandon them, you're walking them with you throughout life. It's, you know, as, as you do that, and as you learn to do that, it's just the most beautiful process. And then when you kind of get back to that state of like, oh my gosh, it's the bliss, it all kind of makes sense. So I think that, you know, first, I, I think for, for anyone that's just struggling, it's beautiful to know that it is not meant to last forever. And again, because we live in a universe and world of polarity, which is one of the laws of the universe, what it means is that, again, if something not great is happening right now, the opposite can also be true. The opposite can be true for you. So I would encourage anyone who's kind of beginning this process spiritually as well. You know, manifestation is beautiful. It's beautiful to start co-collaborating with the universe intentionally, but you are always manifesting. I think the biggest thing that people should start with is starting to understand what the present moment is and allow themselves to anchor within that. Meditating is such a beautiful way to begin your journey because it really, it shows you that your thoughts are not your reality unless you'd like them to be. And most of us would say probably not. So as you, you know, as you start to sit, you can even do this on your own today. You know, anyone who's listening, I mean, you could take a few minutes here and just sit and observe the stillness of the room that you're in. You'll notice that the room itself isn't changing what your thought process is. So, you know, I oftentimes think about how in my personal apartment, I'm like, God, I've lived here for six years. I've had a dark night of the soul in here. I've had a lot of, you know, shit happen, but yet the environment hasn't changed. The stillness that's around me has not changed. Me personally, I've evolved, but it's my thoughts that I've been diving into. And so, you know, the world really lives within in the state of that ego. So take a few moments today and just observe your thoughts, pull out of them for a sec, like a bird's eye view, what's coming in, what patterns are there, begin to observe them. And you'll find as you start to do that, you re-anchor in the stillness that's around you. And it's this beautiful, like unseen force that you're just with at all times. And I actually had a moment where it like almost brought me to tears. I was just sitting on the edge of my bed and I was, I had been reading, um, what was it? It was Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life by Wayne Dyer, his interpretation of Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching, which is beautiful, 81 Principles of Life. And I was just looking at the wall and I almost started crying and I was like, oh my God, I get it. I was like, I get it. I was like, when your thoughts are not infiltrating every part of your existence and you can just observe them like waves on the beach, you reacclimate yourself with the bliss of all that is around you. And that's where the magic happens because then you're removing resistance. Any, you know, the past oftentimes is kind of, it forms our identity. We think that whatever happened in the past is our identity. And the reality is you have no obligation to show up today as you did yesterday. Who cares? And the future you get to create. So, and you're never going to experience the future like it's in the future. You always experience it now. So I think the biggest thing is when you anchor in that now, so much of what we hold on to dissolves. It's beautiful. I, I fuck, I don't know. 
I felt like crying then, right? And this is this is why I want to speak about things like this, and p- people like you, because everything you said then, ah, uh, you're actually on a Dr. Wayne Dyer book here. I got um, the Tao, Tao Te Ching? Tao Te Ching? Tao Te Ching? Tao. Tao yeah. Ching. Uh, your erroneous zones is here. Um, everything you just fucking said, I love being in the present moment. This is what I tell clients to do too, to figure out who they are. Because when you're alone with your own thoughts in the present moment, I think that's authenticity. And so many people distract themselves with whatever it is to escape themselves because they don't know who they are. So when you allow yourself to sit in that present moment, and I do exactly what you just said, a lot of time I do it um, in the mirror and I would look in the mirror and I would think, you've stood here looking at yourself in the mirror in really dark fucking mental places. And now you're here in the same body, looking at the same reflection, happy. I've done it in this exact room I was in. I remember when my grandfather passed, I came in here and I sat here in darkness, having, just feeling so lost and having nowhere to go. And now I'm here t- trying to help people. It's absolutely fucking insane. You said um, uh, about like the polarity and things. So I truly believe that you can't experience, you can't really experience the highs if you don't know the lows. And I'm not oh, not saying you have to go there, but you don't truly understand unless you've been there. And you said again, there's so much to unpack that I love in what you just said. <laughs> Thank you so much. You said about um, before we come into this life, and I 100% believe you have this blueprint. And whether you can go off the path ever so slightly, I'm not sure, but you have this blueprint. And I truly believe that a lot of people say, oh, when you manifest, or if you have this blueprint, you know what you want to do, or you know, before you come into this life, you choose what experiences you want to learn. And a lot of people who have gone through a lot of shit will argue against that. But I think before I came into this life, it was, these are the parents you're going to have. And the experience and the love or lack of love they showed you will turn you into the best parent ever. So, or the best parent I could be. I say the best parent ever. Um, and I truly believe we follow that blueprint and we're here to experience until we reunite with us, the rest of our higher self back up there. And we're like, this is what we learned. And do you want to go back down and learn something else? Do you want to move on? Do you want to be? Our soul would say, oh. yes, that's the craziest thing. Our soul, I guarantee you, we get back up there and I, someone, you know, had a near death experience. I was listening to this on, on YouTube. He had died and he said, what happened was he went up in the cosmos and he was soaring. Like he, he was like, I couldn't even imagine how big and beautiful it was. Oh my God. I felt everything he wants to feel. And he lands in this room and these, these beings come up to him and they're just smiling and they go, okay, what did you learn? What did you learn? And he's looking at him like, oh, you know, they're like, oh, he doesn't remember us. And then this beautiful figure comes up and he's like, oh, you're not quite done yet. They're like, okay, he has to go back. And he falls back down into earth. And earth is a very dense planet, by the way, from a spiritual perspective, this is very dense down here. So it's, we're actually quite lucky that we were able to come here. But when you view it in that way of like, okay, this is just my soul's journey. This is one thing I get to learn. Like, it's so much bigger than us. It's so much bigger than us. And we're not who we think we are. Our ego has infiltrated our mind and that's who we think we are. No way. I always say to people, I'm like, if you could even sense who you really are, what your soul really is, what you could create, like you'd never doubt yourself again. And if you walk through life with that energy of just like, we've got this. You know, I said, I said last night, I was like, there's nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. Even death itself, there's nothing to fear. It's like, you are all as well. You know, you're going to be okay, regardless of the circumstances. I mean, Eckhart Tolle said it beautifully too. He goes, the best time of my life is when I was sitting on a park bench. I had no friends, no family, no money. And I was like, wow. He goes, I, I woke up. I spiritually woke up. It was absolute bliss. And I was like, that is really it. And of course we don't want it, you know, maybe to get to that point, but it's nice to know that you can feel <laughs> heaven on earth in that moment. Yeah. And then you get to walk throughout that, you know, so it's beautiful. I think um, even to link grief with spirituality here, what you said that I watched, there was a point in my life where I watched a lot of near-death experiences on YouTube where people had died and then come back to life, temp- died temporarily, come back to life. I think the page is called um, ND, I can't remember, something NDE. And it just it's just a collection of people who had, died momentarily and then come back to life and they talk talk about their experience and what's very fucking interesting is 99.9 percent of those talk about the same thing that they all have these individual experiences where they um leave their body and instantly feel joy and bliss even though it's scary and they go through this vortex looking thing up out of the earth and then whether they meet 
in a beautiful garden and they meet they meet people from here, uh, people from their lives, or they meet their version of God, whether that's light or a being. And then here's here's a, a footage of your life. Um, here's everything you learned, all the good times, the bad times. Um, do you want to do it again? <laughs> and I I truly think I truly think that if we are a soul, then. 10% of us is still up there and 90% is down here. Maybe it's the other way around. And then we reconnect up there. And it just goes to show that like, I think that the people we live here on earth with, so me and my wife and my kids, all of our souls are up there together. And then in the next life, we change roles. I don't know if you read a book. It's called Destiny yes. of Souls. I've um, never read that, but I believe that wholeheartedly. I think we've all, we all just change roles. Yeah. It's We're like actors There's in a play. It's so fun. Yeah, there's uh, I can't remember the, the author. It's called uh, Destiny of Souls, and he puts people into a deep state of hypnos hypnosis for like two or three hours, and he gets them asking questions, and then everyone starts remembering their past lives, and so many of them are like, um, in this life, me and my husband, or she, they just randomly start talking about stories, and they're like, my husband said this. Actually, in this life, my husband was my wife. I was the husband. Just shows that we are this. It's like a family of souls that just experience together through different ways and part of me right is like I lost a friend uh when she was 15 and I got in the car after going to visit the site where she was killed sorry uh got back in the car my father sent me a photo my sister was just born and like one was out and one was in and then my grandfather died and then my wife got pregnant and then my father died and then not long after we um we had my second boy that uh, second child and it's as though I don't want to say an exchange of souls, but it's like a collection up there. And this is what we experience with those people. And then some come out, some come back in. I love everything you just said. Um, if I could just sum it up there, uh, I like asking this question to people. And I know you'll have a good fucking answer. Is if you could fast forward to when you're 80 years old and you look, you look back in time at this point in your life, what would you be proud of? Oh my gosh, that I'm walking the walk. <laughs> yeah, that um, that I chose to listen. Uh, nothing that I experience. I have no regrets in my life. I have no. I literally, I'm like, you know what? I think everything that we've experienced, we were meant to experience. I I yes. believe that wholeheartedly. There's no nothing wrong that you can experience. Yeah. You're here to learn. And I would look back at myself and go, Oh my god, that is when it all began. I really would because. The risks I've taken, I mean, I, I wouldn't change any of them. I'm so thankful to be listening to my soul. And I think I have such a newfound sense of like integrity and, and pride in myself and understanding of myself. And like, wow, like it feels good to listen to yourself, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that even just that question gets me excited for what what I will get to experience on this earth over the yeah. next, my gosh, 50 years. That's pretty crazy to me to think about, but very exciting. I kind of, I, I don't know if you're, maybe your viewers will get this, but or your listeners, um, just to just to lighten it up for everyone too. You know, I view this also. I mean, think about it this way: when it comes to taking leaps in your life, and when it comes to you know going off, achieving what you want, or you know, kind of doing the big things, right? Your soul did not come here. It didn't pay for this vacation to stay in the hotel room. It does want to visit all the theme parks. So you have a right to go off and explore each ride, and that's all it is. And some rides you're going to like more. Some rides you don't. Doesn't matter. It's a vacation. So I view, I truly view life with a beautiful lens of like, it doesn't matter in the best way, in the best way. You're here to love, you're here to enjoy, you're here to expand, and you're going to experience all of it. We're all going to experience trauma. We're all going to experience some more than other, you know, it's going to be the highs and lows. But when we get out of it, I just have a feeling we're going to pop up. Like you said, we're going to be like, oh God, I want to do it again. You know, as crazy as it is to think yeah. of it. So thank you so much. It is beautiful. Yeah. Um, Thank you so much for your wisdom and your time. This I haven't had a chat like this in a long time. Um, can you tell people watching and listening where they can find you online and about your new course? Yeah. So, um, well, first of all, thank you for having me on. Absolute honor. Truly. Yeah. I always love having these conversations. Love it. Because um, it's amazing finding like-minded people, you know? Yes. Um, so... Where can you find me? So on my social media handles, I am on Instagram and TikTok as Taylor Ryan Nardoni. 
Um, and then my course coming up is called Four Weeks to Freedom. So it launches next Sunday, April 6th. I'm going to do another roundup in October, but it's awesome. It's basically going to be, you know, we have a bunch of different pillars that we're going to cover each week. The first week, we're really cracking the code to what is your highest timeline, right? What are your truest desires? What is that path that you've forgotten about? We'll talk about ego versus intuition. We're going to dive into, I call it my, my dream blaster activity, kind of gaining supporting evidence for the beliefs we want that are going to help us. We will talk about manifestation in the third week, and then we kind of put it all together. So I'm super excited about it. I have an awesome crew of people and I can't wait. It's going to be a beautiful time and just excited to be able to give this information out to the world, you know? Yeah. Good for you. Um, we did just speak about um, time and the present moment. And I think you might be too caught up in that because I'm sure you just said April the 6th. Did I say April? I think I'm so, so sorry. August, okay. August 6th. Just in case people think this is like pre-recorded a while ago. <laughs> Um, August the 6th. Six. Sorry about that. I must have taken okay. myself back to April for a second. Thank you so much for, for being here. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. Thank you. It's an honor.